WebPlus X4 includes the powerful Image Cutout Studio, a dedicated studio environment that allows you to separate the subject of a photo from its background. It's very easy to use, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how. To start, select the photo you want to cut out, and then on the Picture Context toolbar, click Image Cutout Studio. Cutout Studio includes its own help pane on the right here. It provides instructions to help you choose the right method and the right tools, depending on the image you're working with. If I click Choose the right method, I'm told that if my image has a simple or uniform background, I should choose the Discard Brush tool, whereas if my image has a complex background and a more simple subject of interest, I should use the Keep Brush tool. For this photo, the background is fairly simple, so I'll choose the Discard Brush tool. And then I'll select a large brush to start with. I'll also ensure that the Grow Tolerance checkbox is selected. This setting controls the precision with which areas are selected. It tells WebPlus to extend the area under the brush into the surrounding pixels. This option is particularly useful when you're working on very simple or uniform areas. Now I just click and drag on the areas of the image I want to discard. For the more detailed areas, I'll choose a smaller brush size. To get a better idea of the areas that are to be kept and those that are to be discarded, I can click the Show Tinted button. Areas marked in red will be discarded, and you can see that this area here has been marked to be discarded, but I want to keep it. To do so, I just click the Keep Brush tool, and this time I'll clear the Grow Tolerance checkbox, because I only want to select the pixels directly under the brush. I don't want my selection to be extended. Now I just paint over the area I want to keep, and you can see just how precisely I'm able to select this area. OK, let's preview the image cutout. I'm happy with my image, so I click OK, and there's my finished cutout on my page. And now I can just resize it and move it into position as I would any other page element.